Hi all, Planetside Agent here. Uh, today I decided to show you uh, my uh, Russian knockoff of the uh, Optimus 8R. And I got an 8R right here we can uh, take a look at for comparison. Classic 8R, I'm not going to discuss much of this because there's lots of videos on this stove. In fact, um, Jiu-Jitsu 2000 just did one recently on this and it's a great little stove and uh, picked this up a couple years ago off eBay always kind of wanted one so anyway yeah I cleaned it up and it looks pretty good in fact I found a place online <coughs> that uh, from England that actually has remakes of these uh, replacements of these stickers so I think I'm gonna replace the this old warped up one with uh, with the uh, original but like I said this is an 8R discussion this is the discussion of this uh, Russian knockoff of it and uh, the major difference is you can see it uh, it's it's pretty much identical it's got the got the little carrying handle <coughs> just like the uh, the Optimus it's kind of stiff and uh, so that's the same so open her up and uh, the uh, the Russian one you know, a little different this one has uh, the Optimus has two attachments for extra tools I think this might have been for a uh, the little prick that you used to clean the uh, clean the jet of the stove out with and I don't, didn't come with one I got an extra one somewhere I'll probably go ahead and put in there later on and you can also buy these online too. I'll I'll try to remember to put a link in the video for the site that has uh, replacement parts for for some of these old uh, vintage stoves. But this one doesn't. It only has the, uh, the 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 attachment for the tool. Which this one did come with a tool. Also, these uh, Soviet knocks also come with this uh, burner uh, spreader plate that fits on there uh, flame spreader plate so if you like that and after that works exactly the same it's got the uh, the heat heat deflector uh, the big difference is uh, the tanks for the uh, the Soviet one are uh, let me scoot over it a little bit or stainless steel rather than brass and uh, I I like the brass stuff so I noticed Optimus made kind of a remake of their 111 and the tank uh, one model the tank was brass but they painted it green and I thought like what's the point you know it's the brass that makes these things so cool but uh, anyway yeah pretty much the same these uh, pus stands look a little bit thicker gauge wire um, Came with a uh, similar. Let me get out of there. Come on. Ah, ah. Got that in there really good. <laughs> there it is. Uh, a similar style control valve handle, although this one's uh, on this stove's a little bit nicer material. Looks like a uh, bakelite. This better grade of bakelite. Much nicer uh, design. Uh, make sure these are close to the camera. Uh, <clears throat> and it, or, originally, I think this one did come with a chain because it's got the little hole in there, but the chain's gone. These sort of things tend to get lost pretty quick. All these old stoves like this, they they def definitely understood humans because all the control valves all had chains on them because everybody knows that keys of any sort will get lost. So, keys and tent stakes. Anyway, so that's the valve, and the actual uh, stove itself is uh, all out of, uh, you know, the burner mechanism there is actually uh, brass, so, and I, like I said, I cleaned this one all up. It wasn't that bad shit to begin with. I don't think it was used that much before. Well, this one I had to, quite a bit of cleanup to do on him. There's still some stains and stuff. All very similar, two-piece tank, pressure relief valve, 
yeah, pretty much a, a copy. Probably by the time these were made, these, these if they ever had a patent, were probably off patent, so there really wasn't much, uh, just a copy of something that everybody used that. And they operate exactly the same, except one little thing that um, when I first fired this up, the, the performance on it was very weak. And uh, I don't know, I was looking around and I found a video by uh, a guy in England called Charlie Tango One. And he took one of these apart and he found out that the, uh, I don't know if anybody, if you're familiar with these type stoves, they have a wick that, that uh, a wick that's in the tank that, that, that dips into the tank to draw the fuel and it comes out, the wick comes out into the, uh, this little feed piece in here and uh, feeds the jet. And uh, he took it apart and <laughs> evidently at the manufacturer, maybe they had a supply problem or they'd cut in corners, but the wick itself was just a thin, flimsy piece of gauze. Um, and not, not really enough to draw much, much fuel. So I thought, hmm, I wonder. So I took this all apart and sure enough, it was uh, a, uh, just mine had that thin, flimsy piece of gauze in there. So uh, I went ahead and pulled that out. And I found uh, some wicking, uh, cotton wick. Actually, I got it from this uh, Chinese uh, kerosene stove. Uh, it came with extra wicks. So I just took one of those, fit it in there, and put it all back together. And it worked like a champ after that. So it was just that anemic wick that hurt the performance on the stove. But once, uh, I mean, these are... These are identical copies, so once you got the wicking done, you know, it, it it worked like a champ after that, so, anyway, so, I never really got either of these to use um, for camping, I just got them because I I just like these old um, Primus and Optimus stoves, they're just, they're really cool, I like the sound of them, uh, I know some people like to get the replacement uh, uh, silent burners that, uh, that Bernie Dog makes. But uh, to me, uh, the noise doesn't bother me, so <laughs> I like that roar. But like I say, I, I usually don't, I've never used them for camping. Uh, first time I saw this, I was on a, with my brother, we went on a, a bicycle camping trip up into, um, up on Vancouver Island. And uh, one night we were stopped at a campsite, the guy next to us uh, had one of these, and I was really impressed with it, but... Uh, Back then, they were expensive. Still are, actually, <laughs> if you go on eBay and try to find them. Uh, and I had the old Bluette stove, which uh, I reviewed earlier. Uh, it was a lot cheaper and a and lot less to mess with. But I just saw these always unique little stoves, especially the way, you know, they fold up in the little box and all. So, And uh, I got this one just because, again, it was just something different. It was a knockoff of this one, so I thought I'd get it. Actually, uh... I bought it on eBay and it, it wasn't it wasn't a lot cheaper than these because these are more of a classic. These are a knockoff, but uh, yeah, if you didn't want to use one of these, it's pretty cheap. Although the last time I looked out on eBay, these these really haven't gotten any cheaper. They weren't seemed to be at the time when I bought mine. There were quite a few of these out there on eBay, and uh, for some reason I bought two. <laughs> I got in a frenzy and I wound up with two of these. I think the first one I bought, I thought. It was going to be the size of a 111. I think that's why I bought it. And then I bought the second one because I wanted to go knock off of the 8R, but they were both the same stove. So I got two of these. Maybe one of these days I'll put mine up on eBay and sell it. But uh, I'm not much of a businessman. <laughs> Trying to sell and wrap everything up. It's like, eh, nah, it. I'll just leave it there and it'll hang around here and then my kids can sell it after I'm gone my kids can sell on eBay and, and get rich right <laughs> so anyway uh, I'm not gonna bother firing these up you can, you can find plenty of videos of these if you want to see they run I think probably most people gonna watch this already know how these things work so anyway so I just kinda thought I'd, I'd dig it out and, and show you the the similarities of the two uh, just just for fun so, anyway See if there's anything else I want to say about this. I usually uh, always forget to wrap things up. So anyway, there you go. No other, actually, no markings on it, and as far as manufacturer or any of that stuff. So 
no idea about that part. I could probably research. Probably somebody found it. But uh, anyway, that's it. Still a nice little stove, even though it's not the original brass. And uh, okay, another thing I actually wanted to say on this um, is that uh, the workmanship on these isn't isn't as uh, as good as the uh, the originals uh, Optimus and um, just for starters uh, I noticed that uh, the uh, where they roll the edge of the two uh, oh, there we go I see that better uh, where they roll this edge here um, they just they just fold it over where if you look at the uh, the Optimus oops, uh, they actually, I don't think you see that, they actually turn the turn the edge in so you don't have the sharp edge there. They rolled that, they rolled that edge on both the top and the bottom of the, the shell uh, all the way through where this, this, this has a little bit of a sharp edge. Not, not bad because of the paint that they put on it uh, doesn't, but that's just one of the little things. The other thing I noticed too, if you look here on the back where the, uh, the hinge is and, and where the handle attachment is, it's just kind of a, a two-piece hinge assembly here. Where if you look at the uh, Optimus, uh, it's more of a it's a three-piece, so it works a little bit better, a little bit nicer. Oh yeah, and the uh, here the actual handle, the carrying handle is attached to the bottom part, a separate piece, where the uh the knockoff it's actually part of the hinge the the hinge assembly there for it so a little bit of difference there so that's uh for right now that's big the big standout thing so anyway Another little bit of difference between these two stoves, but I say performance-wise, and yeah, they both work just the same. So the rest is just kind of more cosmetic things. So anyway, that's it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.